We feel like we didn't have to pick between the tradition and contemporary science. And I think we have collectively imagined a way forward for the tradition in the midst of these contemporary challenges. The impetus for this project is, um, I would say, both scholarly and ecclesial. The driving question was if we can reconcile biblical accounts of the fall with the findings of science with regard to human evolution. In a way, any sort of uh, um, believer with intellectual honesty and integrity is going to run into that question at some point. So while there's a scholarly impetus, there's also this kind of ecclesial uh, uh, existential impetus of just helping people work through this challenging question. And that was in many ways behind the Colossian Forum, who was the convener of our research team. The Colossian Forum was committed to creating a space and a way of gathering scholars to think through these questions, but doing so within the parameters of the church's prayer, of the spiritual disciplines of the church, the heritage of the church's liturgy and worship, as a way to sort of fuel our imagination to grapple with these problems. And the result was, what for me was one of the real academic highlights of my career, which was working alongside brilliant scholars from whom I learned so much, but worshiping in common as the frame for then our knock down, drag out academic debates. It was really um, enriching and I hope something of that uh, um, experience over several years shows itself in the book. We're attempting to do, uh, uh, conduct this discourse in such a way that um, we don't decide beforehand which discourse is the kind of ruling discourse. And so we've described it in the introduction as a kind of uh, Chalcedonian moment where it, um, uh, drawing on the idea of the Council of Chalcedon that um, Jesus is both uh, divine and human. Scientifically, it's not possible for someone to be both divine and human, um, but the uh, church fathers came up with a way of talking about this which kind of created uh, a, a sort of new path. And so um, thinking about kind of theological imagination in that way as a way of kind of resolving a previous problem is something that we want to, uh, to model in, in this project as well, that we um, don't necessarily have to think that we either have to choose science or we have to choose uh, Christian faith, uh, but that there's a way of being faithful to both. One of the things that most excites me about this book is uh, it is very intentionally interdisciplinary and, and is trying to take seriously that there are Christian scholars across an array of disciplines that have something to say and speak into this um, question. So. Uh, we have a scientist like Daryl Falk who does genetics and biology who gives us the lay of the land, the sort of state of the question, and, and helps us to identify the sort of the minds in the field, so to speak, um, in really helpful ways. But then we have an Old Testament scholar like uh, Richard Middleton who from whom I have learned so much myself. And to see him as a, a scholar of the Old Testament with also a lot of philosophical inclination uh, sort of walk back through the biblical narrative in light of what we learn from Daryl's evolutionary account is fantastic. But then someone like Brent Waters, who's an ethicist and does all this really fascinating stuff on transhumanism and uh, um, our sort of technological realities that we live in. What, what role does the story of the fall play and its overcoming in sort of our technological confidence and hope? So it's a really, um, we have New Testament scholars, we have philosophers, we have theologians. It's, um, and it's a really remarkable ecumenical mix. I think we, we have um, both Catholics and Protestants, and then Protestants from an array of streams. So it's, it's ecumenical without being sort of wishy-washy and middle of the road. Um, we were all animated by a similar set of convictions. One of the interesting things that comes out, uh, and Peter Harrison's essay really focuses on this, is the, uh, the reality that science changes, right? So the idea that uh, Christian theology it has to keep up with science um, 
is uh, a science is a moving target, right? So the things, a lot of the things that used to be considered scientific consensus uh, have been rejected as false uh, since then. And so uh, the idea, so you always have to keep that in mind when you're saying that, you know, Christianity needs to uh, reflect the, the current scientific consensus because the current scientific consensus has oftentimes proved, uh, you know, wrong uh, in the past. Uh, the eternity of the world is one uh, example that Peter Harrison talks about in the medieval period. Uh, the, you know, Aristotle's idea that uh, the world was eternal uh, came up against the Christian idea that the world has a beginning. And um, this could have been seen as a kind of conflict between Christianity and science, and Christianity should have kind of gotten on board with the scientific consensus. But as it turns out, now more scientists think that the world has a beginning and the, the Big Bang idea has kind of taken hold. And so, um, so we need to not be too hasty to think that whatever the current consensus is, we need to uh, get on board. So I love it that the book has a diversity of opinions in it, but they all sort of are anchored by, I think, a common conclusion that um, the theological resources of the Orthodox Christian tradition, the Catholic tradition, if you will, has a, the capacity to deal with 21st century challenges. And then the flip side was that taking seriously these 21st century challenges did not require jettisoning the convictions of the Orthodox tradition. So I think all of us, even though we might, if you pressed any of us on some particular finer points, I think all of us have arrived at a place where we feel like we didn't have to pick between the tradition and contemporary science. And I think we have collectively imagined a way forward for the tradition in the midst of these contemporary challenges. I mean, it's interesting, um, the Galileo trial kind of uh, has a, a really important influence over the way these things are viewed. And the way the story is usually told is that this is evidence that um, Christianity and science are not compatible. Um, and the interesting thing about the trial is that Galileo himself was the one who was defending the idea that Christianity and science are compatible. It was his opponents at, at his trial that were claiming that the scientific evidence uh, is not compatible with, uh, with the Christian tradition and the biblical evidence uh, in particular. So we want to uh, point that out and have a more kind of uh, nuanced and interesting uh, discussion about that. I think our hopes for this book are um, to be a conversation starter. Uh, we, we, we make no uh, uh, pretensions to having sort of settled this question. Um, I think we all are grateful for having had the time to think through it. Sometimes we rush through these things and, and, and um, our group had a sort of patience about it to, to uh, begin the conversation. So I think we're hoping that both scholars across an array of disciplines will find this as a starting point to both map the questions and start to entertain what further trajectories of questioning are. Um, but I also hope, I think that the, um, uh, the writing in this book is accessible enough that some really thoughtful pastors, I think we'll find a resource here for um, adult education, for preaching resources even, just to start to help people imagine in the pews how they can navigate these tensions. And I hope especially maybe young people who are headed off to university will find here a model of how to sort of uh, um, confess the faith in the contemporary world.